Good afternoon, everyone. This is Mukul Yudhvir Singh again on the behalf of Open Source India 2001, and this is the third keynote for today. I hope you've, you've been, you all have been having a blast till now around the sessions that have already taken place. Now with me is a man from an organization that needs no introduction. He is a developer. He's a technologist. He's an entrepreneur, business educationist. Words are, I don't have enough words to introduce, to, introduce him to you. Uh, in all, he's an intersection of all when it comes to open source. None other than Mr. Manish Sharma, who is general manager of GitHub in India. The topic that he's going to be talking on today is open source, the inter-community, the interconnected community that's powering India. Without further delay, I would like to hand over the session to Mr. Sharma and request the audience to post their questions on the Q&A box located on the right-hand side of their windows. Mr. Sharma, all over to you now. Great, thanks. And thanks for the kind words and introduction. Okay, I hope everybody can see my screen and good afternoon. As uh, introduced, I'm Manish, I'm the GM for India. Thank you for joining today. I hope you're having a great time at this super duper important conference on open source. It's you know still unfortunate that we're doing this virtual, but I'm sure this is the last one. Next one will definitely be physical. I really miss you know catching up with people face to face. Um, and also, you know, the great swag that we get at conferences, I'm missing that as well. My topic for today is going to be the interconnected open source community powering India. Um, so for those of you who, who would not have met me, I'm deeply passionate about tech developers and about how all of this is powering India. And I thought I'll talk a little bit about that and, and share with you the insights that I've been seeing over the last couple of years of the transformation of the tech industry and how open source is changing all of this. So the session is after lunch. I hope you had a heavy or a light lunch. Either way, it doesn't matter. I'll try not to bore you. And um, I would love to answer a lot of questions. So keep the questions coming. I think if you step back and look at what's happening in the world today, tech, I don't have to say it, is taking over literally every industry. The explosion that we've seen over the last 10 years is just phenomenal. I love it when I tell everybody that every company in the world is becoming a software company. And all of this is being powered by tech. And if you really think about it, think a little deeply, this has been happening over the last 10 to 15 years, and it has accelerated over the last few years. And, and there are lots of reasons for this acceleration. People will tell you cloud is doing it. People will tell you mobile is doing it. But I am actually telling you that open source is doing it. Right? So somebody wanting to figure out how do I sell online, they can figure out an open source module and get up and running. They want to see how they can do a click and pay, there's an open source module for that. If they want to create a mobile app, there's an open source module for that. So open source is what I have seen really accelerating the software development that's been going on. And, and there's another way of looking at it, how I talk to people, which is this. This is you know, our universe. And, and for those of you who are science buff, you know that it's made of dark matter. Can you touch it? No. Can you see it? No. Is it there? Yes. And, and that's open source for you. In all that you touch and see in the digital world and all that you cannot touch and see in the digital world is powered by open source. If, for example, the Zoom session that all of us are on, you know, I can bet my entire life saving there would be open source code inside of this. So literally every piece of software in the world right now is being powered by open source. And I think that is something which is very significant today. Um, if you rewind, you know, 10 years back, 15 years back, there was always a debate of what's the value of open source? Oh, it's a more academic thing. Oh, I want to play around with stuff. But open source is something which is really, really mainstream. It's an open-ended word that people use, but at the base of it all, it's code. It's code that people are writing. It's code that people are collaborating on. It's code that people are sharing, which is powering everything that we see all around us. And I like to look at this as it's an interconnected community. Right? There's no single developer sitting in one corner of the room or one corner of their office or one corner of their house you know, uh, hacking away on code. It's actually a team sport. It is actually an interconnected community. A piece of code that somebody in Bengaluru is working on will be collaborated by somebody in Brisbane or somebody in Berlin, somebody in Budapest, somebody in Boston, right? So 
this community is what really gets open source going. How people are able to collaborate with each other, share ideas, build on top of each other's ideas. Right? So I might have come up with a great base authentication module and open sourced it. Somebody else can write on top of it and improve it. And I think that's what code has always been about. The, the philosophy of ship and learn, I think that's what also gets imbibed in the open source community. You're always shipping software that people are building on top of it, reusing it, reusing it, and, and sharing it. And this interconnected community has been powering the world. And an example of that is you know, a planet called Mars, or if there are you know, science fiction lovers out there, Barsoom, as Edgar Rice Burrow called it. Uh, but what I really want to talk about is not the novel, but that helicopter on the top right. I'm sure all of you read that in January, the first you know, unmanned space flight that happened on Mars was powered entirely by open source software. It's, it's a great celebration moment of how open source software is really pushing human progress forward. But what's more important is the pieces of software, the pieces of open source code, the libraries that was used in, in the Ingenuity helicopter was written by thousands and hundreds of thousands of developers without even knowing that they're contributing to something like this. Right? So all the open source code, the libraries, the algorithms that the NASA and the JPL team used to power this helicopter was actually written over the last many years by many open source developers. They might have been just writing a logging module for something that they wanted to solve, or they were creating a telemetry function that they open sourced, right? And when the software development for Ingenuity happened, they actually pulled together a lot of this open source code and built you know, what we saw early March uh, take off in, in, on Mars. And that's this great example of how open source really works. So you might be working on a piece of code right now to solve a specific problem, but you don't know how that will get picked up. So when you share and open source your code with the community, the interconnected community that I talked about, they have more ideas on how they can leverage your code to build something more. And coming back from Mars to, I think it's called Jasum. Yeah, that's what Earth is called in that novel. Um, I'm sure we're all aware of the disastrous stuff that's been happening over the last 18 months. And I think giving an example of how the interconnected community, the open source community came together is the COVID-19 India.org project, uh, which I think was a great, great way of how you know, open source developers and contributors came together for what the nation needed. They built a dashboard using open source code, open source technology in open source data that is coming from different places to provide a really, really important function for what citizens and the nation needed. And, and these are examples of how open source code gets used. So beyond the technology, beyond the code, there are real life applications of how open source is impacting each and everything that we do. And you know, I'm always excited. I, I always talk about how India is the perfect, perfect place. It's the largest developer market. But when we talk about an ecosystem, and this goes back to, if you remember biology, ecosystem is always when everything is in a symbiotic relationship, right? Everything is working together. And I truly feel that in India, open source and the dead ecosystem is in a perfect symbiotic relationship. We have the whole education system that has lots and lots of developers and coders coming out almost every year. And I can tell you the average age that I'm interacting with is going down. It sort of you know, makes me worry that I don't know much about tech. We have 10 year olds coming and talking about the beautiful applications that they're building. So that's a very vibrant ecosystem. When you have a startup ecosystem, which is building so much software, right? All that you see around us, all the apps, all the new digital businesses have been built on code, have been built on open source. That's a great ecosystem that absorbs a lot of these you know, talent coming out of institutions. We also have you know, all of the system integrators in the world where developers are working on global projects. We have SaaS companies coming out of India. We have global innovation centers out of India. We have literally every enterprise in India, a bank, a media company, all transforming into digital companies. So the vibrancy in this ecosystem is something which is really, really exciting. And, and I feel that's what really is powering India into the digital nation that we talk about. 
So let me share some stats with you. Let me just quickly click this through. You know, as, as GitHub, we get a, sort of like a privileged view of what's happening in India. And uh, I don't know if you had uh, joined us earlier this year where we talked about, we have nearly 6 million developers from India who call India their home, uh, GitHub their home. And which is great. So these are developers who are collaborating, who are working in open source. But what's more exciting is the, the growth that we're seeing in the last 12 to 18 months. We've had nearly 2 million new developers come create new op, uh, open source repositories. India was the fastest growing uh, open source contribution on GitHub globally. And I think that speaks a lot of how the whole ecosystem, whole culture of contributing back into the open source economy, the open source ecosystem is changing for us. Seeing nearly a million developers create their first public repository in the last one year is, is just great. It's not just about you know, creating and open sourcing uh, your software. I think what's also exciting is developers and the new age future developers that are coming into our ecosystem, realizing that this is really a team sport, right? How you can collaborate with others, right? How can you work on projects which are distributed? And in today's world, as we've seen, distributed software development and collaboration is the most important thing. And guess what? It was actually invented by open source, right? So when we started open source, when open source started decades and decades ago, everybody was distributed anyway. So I think the, the whole culture of being distributed to be able to collaborate and build code is something that the open source ecosystem is really trying. And what really excites me you know, that, that I want to share is we're seeing a lot of open source projects coming out of India. So we have already seen developers from India contributing to projects in Apache, contributing to TensorFlow or React or even Kubernetes or Docker. But what really, really, really gets me up in the morning is to look at projects like these, projects like Mosif, projects like Calibre, Pakisto, Chatwood, ERP Next. These are projects, open source projects that have come from India and have developers from around the world working on them, helping them on more functionality, figuring out bugs, fixing bugs, helping on documentation, what they're doing for these projects, the list goes on. And there are many out there. This is just a short representation of some of these open source projects. Uh, but what is exciting is now we have these projects which are being used by governments, being used by consumers, being used by enterprises across the world to solve the problems that they are going through, which we've already solved through these open source projects in India. And I, I truly believe that over the next few years, we'll have many, many more uh, coming out of India. And what's also driving the ecosystem, which is something which is unique, that I'm sure you would have noticed in the last, uh, I would say one or two years, is the venture economy getting really super excited about the open source ecosystem in India. We've already seen this happen in, in North America, in Western Europe, where you know, the open source community has, has been there for a while now. In India, now we're seeing startups which are based on open source getting funded. It's great. Not only is it going to power these open source companies, it will also inspire many other developers to start building on open source models, to start participating in the open source economy. And I think that's what we really need. What I talked about earlier, open source powering every application, open source powering every, every industry out there. We need more developers. We need more developers to be participating in the open source economy to really drive India as a nation forward. And, and there is a lot to do. So let me share with you some of the things that we're doing. Um, we have, we announced earlier this year, the GitHub open source grant program. And this was based on the feedback that we got from a lot of you over the last one year that, hey, you know, we contribute to open source. We're working a lot on these projects and it is a time intensive, it is a resource intensive. And in many cases, it is a money intensive exercise as well. We need to maintain servers. We need to maintain developers in the project, et cetera. So we announced this grant uh, this year and we've already done one, the first uh, cohort uh, where we started supporting open source developers. We also opened up uh, sponsors. So you as a developer can have a sponsor button on your profile so that developers who are consuming the open source software that you've made, they can sponsor the work that you're working on. And that is very important. And I'm sure you've seen lots of memes about 
you know, a piece of software being written by somebody somewhere. And there is a lot of investment going into everything on top of it. And if that breaks, everything breaks. So the, the core and the important stuff that open source developers are working on across the globe, we have to support them as well. So this is something that I'm excited about and we've got some uh, great feedback from the ecosystem. Uh, I will highly encourage the open source developers out there to get onto our sponsor waitlist. Uh, we are constantly getting more and more developers approved. And, and this is really exciting to power the ecosystem. The second thing which I talked about is the open source uh, led startups and the startup ecosystem is, is very, very vibrant. I don't need to explain it to any one of you. So we've started programs on GitHub Accelerate to support these startups. Uh, for example, for all the startups that are based on open source or are having an open source model, um, many of the global large open source companies like HashiCorp and others have been built on GitHub. Can we get them to share experiences with these startups? Can we get other engineering teams to share how are they doing observability? How are they doing scalability? How are they doing security uh, as they're building their engineering systems? And, and this is what a lot of the startups that we've been talking to really want. Um, they want to learn from others. They want to understand what else can they do. Uh, the, the hunger, the aspiration that I'm seeing in the startup ecosystem is, is just phenomenal. And you know, I'm super happy that we're able to support them in whatever little way that we can. And the third one that we're, you know, I am personally really, really excited about is the education ecosystem. Um, we're always looking at more and more tech talent coming out. And for us to thrive in the open source economy, the next generation of software developers need to imbibe the open source principles. They need to understand what does it mean to contribute the open source? What does it mean to be in the open source ecosystem? What do different licensing mechanisms of open source mean? When do you use what? So all of these we've been doing with the education ecosystem in India, um, not just with students, but with teachers and professors as well, because we're also part of the journey with them because they are the ones who will be interacting with you know, these future developers, as I call them. When we started this program called Externship, and you know, I would invite a lot of you who are from the enterprise world or the startup world to come and partner with us. So what we're doing is we're getting you know, third year students who want an internship. They work on these open source projects coming from these enterprises. And, and it essentially becomes a win-win on both sides, right? So we have student developers who are getting experience from you know, real live world projects and industry is also getting access to you know, cool coding talent and they get an exposure to what are these developers thinking about what are the challenges that they're facing. And I think in India, as I said, there's, the ecosystem is huge. I think we can really bring all of this together and work towards building a, a very long-term culture at the grassroots level for open source development. And there are many startups that are working on this. You know, there are some of them, but they've been leveraging GitHub, they've been leveraging the whole open source ecosystem, they've been leveraging the developers on the platform to really scale. And it brings me back to you know, what I started off in this conversation, which is the interconnected community. All of us, whether we're in the student ecosystem, whether we are working in an enterprise, whether we are in a startup founder, right? all of us are connected in this open source ecosystem. And I feel that it's, it's a duty of everybody to nurture this ecosystem because this is really what is gonna drive everything forward, uh, especially for India. So with that, it's a, I didn't want a long session. Uh, that's you know, how I'm looking at GitHub here in India and that's what we're trying to do. Um, I always like to give an analogy of, you know, we are, as GitHub, we are the catalyst in this ecosystem. We are here to help. Um, do reach out to us, do reach out to me. My handle is msupernaut on, on GitHub. Um, and I will be open to questions. Thank you, Manish. That was a wonderful, wonderful session. The first question that's coming up is, are open access and open source the same thing? Or can so we call them the same thing? They are slightly different. So sometimes, you know, giving access as open APIs, right? So you're giving access to your platform or your, your 
functionality to others by way of APIs and you're opening up these APIs. So that's an open access kind of a view that you can take. Open source is when you have opened your entire code base, you're getting people to look at what the functionality is, suggest improvements, build on top of it, take it, you know, or as I like, we like to call it, fork it, and try to build on top of it and make it your own. So there are slight nuances, uh, but I think it's a good start as well. So there are many people who don't want to immediately jump into open source and open their entire code. This is a good first step. Try to give open access and move towards making your entire code base or platform open. And there are various business models, right? So it should not be, there should not be any pressure on your head. No, no, I need to open source everything, right? It is an ecosystem, as I said, right? So you as a software developer, you as a startup might be using open source code. Zoom was an example that I gave. They would be using a lot of open source libraries. It doesn't mean that you have to open source your code, but what it does mean is you need to appreciate that you are participating in the open source economy just by using libraries and using code. So there is a responsibility that every developer, every tech, every enterprise has to give back to the ecosystem. Right? So I think that's a mindset that I would really say uh, everybody thinks about. Perfect, thanks Manish. The next question is, Will uh, digital currencies like Bitcoin or Ethereum see use of open source or deployment of open source in some way or the other? That's an interesting question. I think yes, right? We're already seeing some parts of it happen. In fact, you can actually go on to GitHub and there's an Ethereum repository on GitHub itself. There are lots of blockchain open source applications on GitHub. So there are applications which are being built in the in the open source world on top of this. What happens from a regulation perspective, that is something else. Perfect. Next, the next question is, you've already mentioned that open source is becoming the go-to thing for everybody in the world. What, what are the reasons that are fueling this growth? Why open source and why this much of attention all of a sudden? I think, you know, dark matter, as I like to call it, right? It is everywhere. Uh, it's also a timing thing. If you think about it, what all of this been happening 10 years back, probably, but not as much as today, right? The advent of all the cloud providers has made it easy for somebody to quickly deploy applications and run it. You know, I can give you my example. So I, in my own small way, I've been associated with different kinds of open source work, but when we had to test something, we had to ship physical hardware, right? So if I had to run an open source module on, let's say, Solaris as an, as an operating system, I couldn't do it. I couldn't log on to anywhere and configure my server. I had to physically get a server, configure it, test it, and then send that server back. This whole thing was so cumbersome, but now today you can immediately do it on the web. So that's one thing that has changed. The second thing is there are so many things which are available from the open source community, which are helping you in the development process, right? In the past, you needed your own licensed web application server. You needed your own licensed clustering software. Now, a lot of these things are available at scale. So you can quickly create your own Docker, your own containers, use Kubernetes. So it's really pushing forward what you can do with tech. So the cost of experimentation using open source has come down. And the third thing is because of even platforms like GitHub, right? you have access to so much code so in the past, if I wanted to write a logging module, I would start writing it on my own. But today there is open source module available. I can just pick it up and write it. So what it has literally done, it has reduced the time I would take to write my application. I can literally piece together different pieces of open source libraries, open source code, add my own secret sauce on top of it, right? which is you know, my algorithm, build something and ship it. And this happens almost on a daily basis. And because of DevSecOps, and I know there are lots of sessions being conducted on DevSecOps during this conference, because of DevSecOps, developers and engineering teams are able to whip up software a lot faster and more secure way. I think all of this is literally what is changing uh, everything. And don't forget the consumers. The consumers demand everything. So it started off with e-commerce, right? But now look at everything that we do. There are apps for literally everything. So developers are quickly able to pull something together, right? You want a React framework, hey, it's available. You want to deploy it on a Linux machine on the cloud within the next half an hour, hey, it's available. These things in the past were complicated, were difficult, and they were expensive. 
it's a lot quicker now. So this is what is really fueling uh, the economy. It's fueling innovation. And as more and more work happens, more and more cool open source stuff comes up. Machine learning and AI is a great example. Right. In the past, it's only been about, you know, algorithm and tech that has been open source. Now you have models available. You can use a TensorFlow model and start creating stuff, which you can put back to the community. Somebody else can pick it and build on top of it. So I, I think this will only continue that 99% of every project using open source will slowly become 100% of every project in the world using open source. The, the next question, Manish, is... Uh... Uh, though this is an old news, but what are your views on the acquisition of Red Hat? I, I, I cannot comment on that, right? So that's a Red Hat thing. But you know what I talked about, the, the venture community uh, coming and investing in a lot of startups? I think it's a great example because as I said, the ecosystem is all connected. So when everybody sees that there is a lot of economies of scale in a company, you can create a company, get investments, you can create jobs, you can create new categories, you can create new products. It gives inspiration to the future generations to start creating more startups which are going to get funded by the ecosystem. And I think it's a very exciting moment for India as well. You know, those examples that I gave, um, there are startups in India based on open source models that are getting funded. And these are product companies, which is also very exciting. Perfect. Not a lot of people talk about uh, the revenue opportunities associated with open source, right? Where do you think are the, or what do you think are the biggest revenue opportunities uh, keeping open source in focus? There are many actually, you know, there are enough and many examples all over the world and closer home in India as well. You gave an example of Red Hat, right? So there's always that model of taking open source products and building a service and support model on top of it, right? which is great. There is the other model of you creating something and open sourcing it. What it provides you is real economies of scale. It's not about revenue or sales. It's actually economies of scale, which is you're not hiring hundreds of developers, right? You as a small team of core, the, the core developers are building the secret sauce, as I say. And then you have all the community members coming and building on top of your code because they want to use it for their own purpose. There might be somebody in Germany who wants to use the code that we built here, but they want to localize it, right? Because that's the only way they will be able to use it in their front end. And the fact that they've done it, suddenly your open source project or code has German support. It will have tax law support for South America. What you've done is without investing resources, you have expanded the functionality of your product. Right? And that's a very different way of thinking of how you would scale your company. And obviously the revenue model is you could either sell your product with additional functionality. So the base product is open source available for anybody. And what that helps you do is it helps you get more and more customers. Across the globe, you might suddenly get 5,000 customers that are using your product. They might not be paying, which is fine, but you have a strong user base that is giving you feedback on usage, they're giving you requests for features which you're building on top, and that's what you're charging for, right? So your plus plus features on top of your open source project is actually what gets commercialized. So there are you know, enough and lots of models available on open source. Um, if you had asked me this question 10 years back, the answer might have been different, but I think now, given that there is open source everywhere. I'm going back to the interconnected community and the dark matter that I talked about, there's opportunity everywhere. Even enterprises today are looking forward to getting consultants, getting experienced open source developers to come and advise them on what should their open source strategy. It's not only about deploying Tomcat or Apache anymore. It's about how do they manage their own code, right? How do they manage the boundary between the internal code and the public code, right? So there are, there is a revenue opportunity for the open source ecosystem to go and consult and advise and help many of these enterprises move into the, the digital future that all of us are sort of racing towards. Perfect, perfect. Manish, the uh, success of a project in open source depends as much as, much, uh, as, much as uh, on the community as much as it does on the core, right? So how do you make sure that your community members stick to contributing towards a cause and do not go to other communities or maybe 
do not de- deviate you know uh, in uh, with some other projects that's a very open ended question right you since it is the community you can definitely not put pressure on somebody to be you will only work on my project you will never work on any other project that will never happen i think uh, there are two sides to it one definitely is the tech intrigue right why somebody works on open source project is because they want that tech stuff to go out they love solving problem they love building something right so there's the passion that would come out um they would build it to some point and then go off to another project which is fine because you will always have somebody else come and build on top of it so that's one way of looking at it and the second way of looking at it also is you have to manage your community as well right so you have to be more forthcoming you have to be more responsive so if i am maintainer of the project i need to be responding to issues that are getting created i need to approve or reject the pull requests that are coming and give reasons for it right so if if contributors to an open source project feel that their views their comments everything is not being valued or not being taken up they will feel then this community or this project is not for me i'll move on to the next one so i would say it's a mix of both uh you have to nurture the community and it goes back to the comment that i made about the ecosystem the symbiotic relationship in the whole ecosystem everything needs to be nurtured um if you leave something to be just as is it will decay and die so you really need to engage and that's an important part of the community i think you know conferences like this the open source india conference the meetups that keep happening the the hacks that people keep doing on different apis and different code these are great ways of keeping the community engaged um and as i said we act as the catalyst in all of this do reach out to us do reach out to me uh in how we can help in really helping the open source code move forward perfect finish the next question uh, i i think the audience is loving your answers they are pouring in questions and more questions and But... i thought i could get away with a short presentation <laughs> perfect so the next question manish is like linux linux right what do you think are the next big open source entities it's all over the world you can see it you have you know you have different pieces which are already using right kubernetes think about it right it's everywhere all web applications are starting to use it you are using react frameworks for the ui that you're building you are using dockers now that everybody is working on machine learning and a lot of the ai pieces tensor flow is becoming very important all the mobile apps that you're building flutter is important so there are lots of these things that have come out in different areas linux is there as an operating system right it's it's a base platform if you think about a lot of other things that are coming on top of it they're all becoming open source so look around it's all there and i go back to my comment of dark matter it's all there so you just have to go out and see you don't have to always think that linux is the only thing that is a big open source project everything else is also out there which are being used by developers to build these applications perfect the next question manish is could you please elaborate on the github of externship mode of operation oh sure so at github education is a super important area for us uh, we work very closely with students we work very closely with institutions so there is a, a a formal program called github campus program you can go to education.github.com to get more details um it's completely free right this is you know us working with the community purely for community reasons um any institution can sign up get access to all of github uh, including the premium features for free for the educational institution and what we do as part of the campus program uh, for the audience who asked this question we actually work on enabling students so what is git what does pull request mean what does github do how do we work what are the different cloud providers how do you build applications right how do you work on you know blockchain the question that somebody asked how do you work with these technologies so we work on these with students we do hackathons with them we also train the teachers right so this is a program that an institution gets into along with github and we invest in enabling the institution on this at the end of this right after all that you've done in enablement you have the option of getting students get access to internships so we have enterprises and open source projects on the other side of us all running on github they give projects to these interns right as part of the the program 
So we have more than 250 institutions um, in India. Students from them took part in the first externship that we did this summer. Many of them got placed as well, which is you know it's super exciting for me. We have the next cohort of the externship happening in uh, in winter, and then the next one in the summer again. So if you go to githubindia.com, uh, to whoever asked that question, I can see you. Um, if you go to githubindia.com, you will see more details. Um, you can just go to the education section, the externship would be there, and you will see the steps. Thank you, Manish. Just a few more questions before we sure. let you go. The next question in line is, how does monetization of open source help it back? Help it back? I'm not sure what that means. Um, in the I, audience, I if uh, who has posted this question, Amit Jaswal, if you can please elaborate on the question, we can ask. What does maybe, help it back mean? Yeah, we can probably take it one more time. Meanwhile, yep. uh, what are GitHub plans for India and for the world? Are they different? Oh, it's the same. So our mission is to be the home for all developers, right? Our purpose of existence is to help developers, right? Uh, whatever we can do to get the community together to help developers build more software, build more secure software, get access to more tech globally. That's the purpose of GitHub. And if you think about that purpose, India is the largest developer market. So I, I repeat this often and I mean it, GitHub and India are the perfect product market mix, right? So GitHub in India is all about how do we support the ecosystem here? And I think that's what we've been doing all over the world. So the same thing happens in other countries, the same thing happens in the global. And it's not about India or global. The interconnected community is the entire community. Right? So the example that I gave in the beginning of Brisbane to Bangalore, to Budapest, to Boston, to Berlin, to I'm thinking of more B capitals, uh, Brussels, right? They're all connected. The developers, there is no boundary in the digital world. It's all bits and bytes. It's all zeros and ones. They're all connected. So being able to share these best practices, being able to bring experiences of all the great stuff that Indian developers are doing and take it to global, and as well as get global experience and share it with the developer community here so that everybody improves and moves forward. That's the spirit of open source as well. Everybody shares, and that's the purpose that we have. And you know, I'm super. I always say privileged to be doing this here in India. Perfect. Thanks, Manish. That was a wonderful, wonderful session. Anything that you would like to leave us with? I think you know, I, it was a pleasure being here, and I really, really wish this was in person. I look forward to the next one. I think you know, having the. the Post-question discussions right after the session is always exciting. I miss that. Looking forward to it. But I'm super inspired to see all the tech stuff, all the developer stuff, and all the open source stuff that's happening in India. Um, I, a huge patriot, I see a lot of tech coming out of India, taking on all the problems that the world has and solving it using tech. And solving it using open source and open sourcing it from the world from India, I think it is just amazing. Uh, there's a lot that we can do. As I said, reach out to GitHub. We are the catalyst. We can definitely help uh, in developer stuff or open source stuff that you or your ecosystem want to do. Thank you for inviting me. It was indeed a pleasure. Thank you, Manish, for the wonderful, wonderful session. Audience, we start with the first CXO panel discussion at 3. Thank you. Please stay tuned. Manish, we'll Thank see you, you again. Yeah. Bye.